it's basically a holiday, people don't go to work. Uh, then, uh, of course, when I moved to uh, London for McLaren, um, McLaren, you might be asking why I put this yin yang symbol up there. This is pretty much the shape of the building where I work. It was designed by Norman Foster. Uh, it's the new McLaren Technology Center. And what it is is probably pretty much, if you can imagine, the white part being uh, the building and the black part being the lake. It's really based on a, on a shape like that. The lake does uh, uh, feed off the building and help the building. The building feeds off the lake and, and so forth. It's uh, an incredible, incredible place to work. I've never seen a building as beautiful to work in as this place here. It, it's a, it, it boggles the mind when you walk into McLaren because it really is something that uh, make Star Trek Enterprise look a bit old-fashioned. Um, it's that far in the future, and it's got Ron Dennis's philosophy of, of being very, very enjoyable, almost to the point of where you don't want to go home, and you can't wait to get back to work. That kind of uh, emotion that uh, makes you really, you know, put out 100% at work just because you're in that kind of environment that stimulates you to be uh, creative and, 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 and resourceful. Um, that's the building from the top, and as you can see, it's uh, it's got that uh, that very similar shape to Yin Yang. We have everything in that building that we need to, to start the car from scratch to produce it. The, uh, um, all the testing is done there. We have a track very close by to do all our track testing. Uh, we have the wind tunnel in there. Uh, we have the restaurant. We have the gym. We have the pool. All the different studios for electrics and uh, fabrication, carbon fiber layup, uh, rebuilds. Everything goes on within that, that area there. This is the wind tunnel. Um, it's, it's an amazing place. We're in there all the time. We basically never shut it down. It's always working. Uh, this is probably one of the only moments I've shut it down <laughs> for the photograph. It's just a lot more, uh, it's, it's more, it's more expensive to turn it on than it is to start, start it, to leave it run. So we pretty much leave it going the whole time. So in the world of Formula One, it just, it's always in use. Uh, every week it's being used for constant updates. I think I, I heard that there's a, uh, an average of over 300 changes Per week on on each Formula One car between races, so it might be a small change, might be a larger change, but an average of 300 changes to the car every week, and most of those are aerodynamic uh, things. Aerodynamics is a black magic; nobody understands it. But you know, things that look like they work don't work, and things that look like they don't work work. So it really is constant testing. Um, we are the first company to uh, bring in the carbon fiber technology, which is what we're introducing today on the on the 12C, and of course, carbon fiber came from the aeronautical industry. Um, all its uses were from, from uh, that, that investigation in how to uh, support uh, heat and uh, strength and lightweight. Uh, we adopted that technology in 1981 for our racing cars, and that became uh, the, the norm for the whole racing car industry shortly thereafter. Uh, we developed what was called the MP4-1, the first McLaren uh, uh, Formula 1 car in, Ron in the Ron Dennis era, as we call it. And uh, it's now into the automotive, uh, it's cascaded into the automotive industry now uh, for the benefit of all of us, as, as, as you can imagine. Um, this is a little bit of the history. We, we sort of started to make our name, name as McLaren in the mid-90s in the road car area segment because of this car that you see here. Uh, this is the McLaren F1. The McLaren F1 was really um, the supercar of the 20th century. It started in 93, the project, <coughs> and basically we built about 100 of them, shortly over 100, and uh, between private clients and uh, racing versions. We won them on outright. Uh, we uh, developed this car basically to be the ultimate hypercar. In other words, um, does it matter uh, you know, uh, what it costs, it does matter what it costs, but what I'm trying to say is you know, if it's going to be expensive, it'll be expensive. But we optimized, or they optimized the, uh, the packaging and uh, put the driver in the middle of the car and developed an incredibly powerful and efficient engine for it in extremely you know, dynamic shape. And pretty much that car has been unrivaled in terms of performance up until shortly when the new Bugatti Veyron came out. And uh, that's a uh, tour de force, of course. And, uh, engineering and technology, but that car took forever to get out because of the overheat pro overheating problems they had, and uh, you know it's uh, it's it's a bit of a uh, of a fat pig. If you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I know, but that's. <laughs> um, 
this is the uh, carbon technology. If I, if I briefly show you what makes that car special, it's the introduction, like I said, of the, uh, the carbon technology into the F1 that made the world sit up and notice that, for, that McLaren can, can do extremely special cars. That tub, if I give you a relevant number, um, it took about 6, 000, 4 to 6,000 hours to build that carbon tub. Um, and roughly, say, 100K to do it. Um, the next car that we built was the McLaren, Mercedes McLaren SLR, and we got that process down considerably in terms of hours to, to produce it and, and the cost down to around 30,000. <laughs> With the car we're introducing today, which shows you how you can actually use that engineering uh, development to, to optimize production, we've got it down to four hours to build that carbon tub, much lighter than the other tubs before it, much stronger, and it roughly costs us about that much money to to produce it. So you can see what's going to happen next with the succeeding cars that we bring out at McLaren. It's going to cost even less, even more quicker to achieve. And, uh, and when we start doing other cars that maybe get down to more uh, customer friendly uh, cost, say entry level cars or things like that, we can still bring in that carbon technology. That use of technology can only be um, used if you start with a blank sheet of paper. To convert a car into carbon technology is unheard of. Um, it just it'd be way astronomically expensive to do. Um, this car here is, like I said, the first main car that McLaren is producing in its whole new product strategy range. Um, and as a designer, of course, the ability to start from uh, ground zero or a blank sheet of paper to be able to produce a car that sort of sets the new look for McLaren. Uh, not the easiest thing in the world, of course, because you don't want your car being said that it looks like or resembles some, another car in the market. So you have to instill uh, some kind of unique design theme or unique look to the car. <coughs> um, what I've tried to do here was uh, based on what we call sort of the regular mid-engine super sport uh, car package to give it its own character and philosophy. That's kind of easy when you're working with an optimized package and not really trying to embellish it. You're trying to more work around function follows purpose or purpose follow, uh, form follows function. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, you don't want to forget about the form, so I almost take it as form equals function. If it functions well, it's going to look well at the same time. It's a lot like military aircraft. You know, we all admire the, the looks of these super high performance military aircraft, and they don't have to sell them, so they're not worried about making them look beautiful. But they are beautiful because they are so efficient in the way they're, they're made or designed. Um, we did a lot of testing on the car. Um, you might think that uh, it's a bit of a crime or nonsense for McLaren to build just another supercar. Uh, it's not really just another supercar. This car has the best horsepower to CO2 emission ratio of any car in the world today. Um, it has, like I said, 600 horsepower, but in that sense it's much more efficient than the Toyota Prius. So you can imagine how do we do that. That's an extreme big jump in technology and fuel efficiency. Um, that is the car basically in a camouflage pattern. They're not usually in blocks of black, but uh, I'll try to speed it up a little bit. I think people are getting a bit, bit uh, snoozy in there. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll go through this really fast. I'm going to go through a million years of evolution right now. <laughs> this is what we started doing as creative uh, people. We started putting renderings on, on caves and uh, sort of recording things that we'd actually seen that we wanted to remember. Then we took it to the next level, which is actually putting it on, on, on written paper and developing writing styles that sort of made sense and uh, uh, you know, that was a whole other industry. Then we started making cars. Um, we did that by uh, actually creating models of the cars in clay. Uh, it's still the best medium, I think, to work with. And uh, uh, we started drafting, putting these images first on paper, translating them as uh, numbers and uh, dimensions and measurements into a physical uh, model. Nowadays, um, this is beyond me how they do it. They actually can sketch on a pad with a pen like that and create something. That's, uh, I never knew that. Um, no, actually, we, we, we're all pretty much up to speed now. It's the very latest technology and offers you immense flexibility in terms of being much more uh, uh, um, brave with your designs. Before, when I was in Art Center, after 12 hours of rendering a beautiful car, uh, your, your hand slipped, and then you had to throw it away and start again. So a lot of times I had to show up for Stuart's class without any drawings and try to explain to Stuart. I did work 24 hours and just slipped, you know. And uh, this offers you 
the possibility of just going back a step and correcting it and being, like I said, a lot braver in your color choices and design choices. What I'm doing at McLaren now is we're starting to do a lot of this stuff digitally, but also we're presenting the work digitally. So we have 